the latest and greatest fighting game, Tekken 8, has finally released. If you're a Mortal Kombat enthusiast like I am, you've probably seen every single MK1 player jumping ship to Tekken. I've never been a Tekken fan myself, but I'm gonna be honest, I bought the game and I've been absolutely loving it so far. So today, I wanna show other Mortal Kombat enthusiasts how to transition to Tekken. All right, that being said, let's go ahead and go over the moveset. So get... Now wait, don't get overwhelmed. While the move list may seem scary, it actually has a lot more in common with Mortal Kombat than you may think. Just like in MK1, all you have to do is find the select few buttons and strings that are best for your character. Once you do that, this game feels a lot easier to tackle. And that is a perfect segue to the first topic of today's video. Let's talk about the things that are going to feel familiar to Mortal Kombat players. Just like in Mortal Kombat 1, every single character has access to a 1. This is usually their best tool to punish slightly unsafe moves, and it's usually a great poking tool. So for example, I'm playing King. King has a great one. You can use this very often, and it has incredible range. He also has a down one. Most characters have a down one as well, which is great. You can use these things to poke people out. Very similar to Mortal Kombat 1. In that same regard, we have Neutral. Neutral is very important in Tekken. Tekken is the neutral game. It, it is defined by neutral for the entire time and it, it's been existing. Mortal Kombat 1 players are kind of used to neutral because you kind of play it, but at the same time, you have Kung Lao Hat, Striker, Sector Missile. You don't know a thing about neutral compared to this game. So you gotta understand what that means. What does it mean to play neutral? Find your best tools and find the range that you should be standing at. For example, I'm playing King. King likes to be up close because he loves to throw grabs and stuff. But what, what do I do when I'm not up close? Well, I have this nice little low from here. I have this armor. I have a lot of tools that I can use. I have that run that I can get in with grab and start rage up. There are a lot of tools that you can find and understand and you need to understand because that is the real kicker of Tekken and that is how you succeed online. Something that some Mortal Kombat players may love, something that most Mortal Kombat players may hate, is this game also has a fatal blow. It's called a Rage Art, but once you're below 20% health, you have an armored super. And uh, it's not very hard to do. It's not very hard to hit, and it does massive damage. As you can see here, I have this wrestling move. Boom shakalaka. It's a slobber knocker! But yes, there are fatal blows in this game. This is also the rage mechanic. Once you're below 20% health, you also do more damage on your combos. So it's a, it's like a fatal blow mechanic on steroids. We kind of touched on this earlier, but again, you need to find the best tools in your character's kit and use them. For example, King. King has this gigantic moveset, but there are only a couple of throws that you can use that are the, his, his best throws. For example, this one right here. The, uh, I forget the name, the Cesaro move from WWE. Oh my God! Oh my God! It does a lot of damage, right? An absolute lot of damage. Then you have something like this, the, uh, the Tombstone Pile Driver. Oh man, the, to oh. the Tombstone Pile Driver. It's hard to do, I'm sorry. We have something like that, which does a lot of damage, and it's a different mix-up. Those are his two, two of his best grabs, but he has so many different grabs I wouldn't even know about. Uh, what I would recommend to do to find your character's best moves, I would recommend a channel called The Main Man SWE. I'm going to link him in the description. I've been using his channel to learn a bunch of different Tekken characters. I would really recommend his 8 minute guides if you want to start out learning a character. It has been incredibly helpful for me in transitioning from Mortal Kombat to Tekken, so shout out to your channel. Now let's talk about some concepts Mortal Kombat players may not be familiar with. Let's start off with something that Mortal Kombat players will rejoice at. This game has very little projectiles. <laughs> I know, I know, it's phenomenal. But here's what I want you to understand, zoning is still a thing. It's just kind of with more like attack zoning, you know what I'm saying? Like some characters will sit outside of this range and use very long range attacks to zone you out instead of projectiles, but it is much more fun in my opinion than getting projectile spammed all game. So NRS players rejoice. There's something very strange about blocking in this game that Mortal Kombat players are going to need to adjust to. As you can see here, that says middle. That means mid. He's throwing a mid at me, right? Let me try to duck this. You might be con confused. Why is this hitting me? Well, in Tekken 8, you can only low block lows. You can only low block lows. 
Low block is way worse in this game than it is in most fighting games. So you have to be careful when you low block. What I would recommend you do is understand timing rather than just sitting low. And this is this is why neutral is so much more important. You need to be full screen instead of blocking because blocking is a lot worse in this game than it is in Mortal Kombat. Now we can finally address the elephant in the room, the third dimension. This is a 3D fighting game. We are on the third plane. You can move side to side. That is kind of strange for Mortal Kombat players. We haven't been in 3D since Armageddon. Actually, I take that back. Uh, there's that DC game. We don't talk about that. It's like Voldemort. Anyway, what you can do is sidestep in this game. You can actually sidestep attacks. So, for example, I'll have my friend here do a... Where do I do that at? Do a kick, right? I'll have him kick me. I can actually sidestep these and get out of the way. But I'm going to have him do a non-sidesteppable kick. They have a little blue trail behind them. You can't sidestep some attacks, so that's how you counter that. There are some attacks that you cannot sidestep. You can sidestep a lot of, of attacks in this game, though. So knowing which attacks to sidestep and when to use these mobility tools is key in Tekken. Something Mortal Kombat players also need to get used to is jumps. Jumps are very different in this game. They are not very high, as you can see. They're pretty more, they're like a little bit more realistic. Um, there are some like jump kicks, but jump kicks are actually used more so for like combos and stuff. Like King has this jump launcher for combos. Um, you don't really see a lot of characters coming in with jump in overhead attacks like that because it's not really a thing in this game, you know what I'm saying? There's stuff like this, I guess. It's, it's not really, it's very different from Mortal Kombat, so get used to that. Jumping is not very strong in this game. The final thing that Mortal Kombat players need to get used to and are not ready for is... Crossplay. That's right. This game has crossplay on launch. Whoa! And guess what else it has? Great community feedback. This game was having some online issues within the first day of launch, which is uh, understandable. And then guess what? They fixed it. And they communicated the entire time while fixing it. That's all we want. That's all we've ever asked for. You know what? That is great, and if this game can provide that, I might start playing Tekken a whole lot more. Tekken is one of those games that is incredibly frustrating when you're losing, and there will be people who are Tekken pros, Tekken veterans, who've been playing this game for like 20 years. This game hasn't really changed much since Tekken 1 to Tekken 8. These characters have very similar moves because that's the type of game this is, so you will get frustrated, and in order to deal with that frustration, the best way I'd like to look at it is understand how improvement works the number one thing that you can do to help yourself getting frustrated is not get upset when you lose a match or win a match every single match look at it as okay you know what i'm gonna play tekken today and i'm gonna try to win a majority of my matches if i don't that's okay because at least i'm improving and i'm trying the best way to look at it isn't on a match to match basis it's on daily maybe even weekly depending how much you play the game Look at it from that, from a broader perspective, and then you will start to improve and you will stop getting so frustrated. And with that being said, that is going to be today's video of how to transition from Mortal Kombat to Tekken 8. I really hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you're excited to play this game. I know I am. If you enjoyed or if you learned something from today's video, please do me a huge favor and leave a like. Subscribe to my channel if you have not yet. I'm uploading daily fighting game content. Now that a new fighting game is out, I can say that instead of Mortal Kombat content. I'm also streaming daily on my Twitch channel, at Big Flounder, linked in the description below. I have a Discord server, the Flounder Family. It's one of the most wholesome. Just kidding. It's one of the best communities on the internet. Uh, follow that if that interests you. Once Crossplay comes out from Mortal Kombat, we're going to have tournaments. where We might start doing Tekken stuff in the future. Tekken tournaments, Tekken uh, King of the Hills, whatever. I need to look, look into that because this game just came out. So if that interests you, please do me a huge favor and join that up. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.